What if Florence Nightingale never developed the environmental theory? What if men never practiced in nursing? What if nursing never became recognized as a profession? We may never know. In this video, we will be discussing the history of nursing and nursing theory. But first, let's begin with some key terms. Concept. A concept is a collection of words or mental images that describe an event or phenomenon. It can be simple or complex and is essential to communication. Theory An abstract statement formulated to predict, explain, or describe the relationships among concepts, constructs, or events. Conceptual Framework A group of concepts that are broadly defined and systematically organized to provide a focus, a rationale, and a tool for the integration and interpretation of information. Paradigm A worldview underlying the theories and methodology of a particular scientific subject. Theoretical model a mental representation of how things work. For example, the biopsychosocial model of health which demonstrates the relationship between the three major influences in the behavior or mental process. Now let's start off the lesson with some history. Florence Nightingale, who was also known as the Lady with the Lamp, was born May 12, 1820, and is known as the founder of modern nursing. She was the first nursing theorist, and her environmental theory recognized the importance of such things like clean water, fresh air, cleanliness, and comfort, to name a few. The environmental theory was known to reduce the mortality and morbidity rate during the Crimean War. She was a statistician using bar and pie charts and highlighting key points. International Nurses Day on May 12th is observed in respect to her contribution to nursing. Her concepts differentiated the role of nursing from other medical professions and was the first to propose that nursing required education and training. She died August 13, 1910. Next in history is the men. Historically, men have always been in nursing. Male nurses at a sick bay in Port Royal Acadia in 1629 were the first known to practice nursing in Canada. Many of them were Jesuit priests. In 2006, 6% of nurses in Canada were male. There was 5% in Ontario. But who has the most? Quebec with 10%. Let's review. Who was the first nursing theorist, also known as the Lady with the Lamp? That's right, Florence Nightingale. What theory is Florence Nightingale most known for? Of course, the environmental theory. What percentage of nurses in Canada are men? You got it, 6%. Which province has the highest percentage of men in nursing? It's Quebec with 10%. Moving on to nursing associations, there are three main organizations. 
the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario, or RNAO, has a mandate to encourage professional development in nurses and develop standards for education and practice. The Canadian Nurses Association, or CNA, used to be called the Canadian National Association of Trained Nurses, but in 1924 changed their name to the CNA. The College of Nurses of Ontario, or the CNO, is the governing board for registered nurses, registered practical nurses, and nurse practitioners. It is the governing body that protects in the best interests of the patient. Education in nursing is always changing. Here are some important dates to remember. For the sake of studying, note that some dates are more important than others. In 1874, the St. Catharines Training School was the first hospital diploma school in Canada where the nursing program went from an apprenticeship to an educational model. This was a big day in Canadian nursing history. 1881, the School for Nurses at the Toronto General Hospital was established. In 1896, Mary Agnes Snively developed a three-year course with 84 hours of practical nursing and 119 hours of instruction by the medical staff. In 1918, following World War I, the widespread influenza pandemic led to support for public health programs and new patterns of healthcare delivery. 1919 was the year the first undergraduate nursing degree program was established at the University of BC. 1932 demanded for transfer of responsibility for nursing education to general educational system. In the 1950s and 60s, experiments with two-year programs for nursing began, and the movement to separate nursing education from the authority of hospitals began. In 1967, Laurentian University started student intake. In the year 2000, all professional nurses are required to have a bachelorette degree. Now on to our next subject, which is the nursing theory. What does it do? It provides a basis of nursing practice. It is important to nurses because it helps to interpret data, make decisions based on relevant information, plan for care, and predict and evaluate outcomes. One of the main reasons why it is important is because it helps to differentiate nursing from other disciplines. Were there problems developing theories? Absolutely. The main problem that was encountered by early nursing theorists was how to organize and make sense of general nursing knowledge and applying this knowledge to an individual clinical case. Time for another quick review. Which association is known for protecting the public? The College of Nurses of Ontario, or the CNO. When and where did nursing education change from an apprenticeship to an education model? Hope you were paying attention. It was in 1874 in St. Catharines, Ontario. What is one reason nursing theory is important? There are a number of reasons. If you chose any of these, then you're correct. One, it helps to interpret data. Two, helps nurses make decisions based on relevant information. Three, helps plan for care. 4. Helps predict and evaluate outcomes, and 5. It helped to differentiate nursing from other disciplines. Moving on. One way to help ease the problems with nursing theory is with the use of the nursing meta paradigm and its four basic building blocks of nursing. The nurse who acts on behalf of and in conjunction with the client, the person and their family who is receiving care, the health status in terms of the client, and the client's physical and social environments. These concepts all work together to make up the foundations of nursing theories. There are five types of theories. The first one is practice-based theory. It was developed to demonstrate application within a range of clinical contexts and settings. Next is needs-based theory. It is used in conceptualizing the patient as representing a collection of needs. Also, needs theories were thought to hold potential for explaining human behavior. Interactionist focuses on the relationships between nurses and their clients. Systems theory accounts for the whole of an entity, its component parts, and the interactions between them. 
and lastly, simultaneity views the individual as an entirely irreducible whole, inherently holographically connected with the universal environment. These theory types represent a distinctive approach to articulating and understanding of the client of nursing as well as nursing's role in relation to that client. Review time again. This is the last one. What are the four basic building blocks of the nursing meta paradigm? Nurse, person, health, and environment. Name two of the five theory types we discussed. The five that were listed were practice-based, needs, interactionists, systems, and simultaneity.